All right, hi guys, welcome to Math 20-1. Um, so this is just gonna be a little bit of a rundown of how to um, access the course and some of the kind of important points that you'll wanna keep in mind as you're working through the course. So the way that you'll access it most likely to start is through school zone. So you should have been given a username and password um, for that when you registered. And then basically what you'll do is when you're in the website, you're going to go to this apps button right up here <clears throat> and you're going to choose the Moodle link. So this is basically kind of the starting point um, for where all of your courses at Argyle would be located. So you'll have a list of different courses. Um, It'll look different than mine, of course. And basically what you'll want to do is go to um, you know, math 20-1. And the site really likes to make you log in a lot. Um, so you might have to do that a couple times um, in the process. So just bear with it. And then once you get to the course, basically what you'll have is if you haven't done any courses at Argyle before, you'll have to do this um, go course. And so basically the go course just kind of guides you through some of the basics of working through an online course. Um, including like stuff that I won't go over in this um, kind of little introduction. So you'll want to make sure that you go through that. Should all be pretty straightforward. You can just click right on this image to go to the course. After you've completed the course, um, within like a couple hours at the most, you should get a code emailed to you. Um, it'll go to your school email, so make sure that's what you're checking. And once you get that, then you can go to this Go Course Code Assignment. Basically, you'll just go into it and literally just enter the code that you got in your email. Make sure you pay attention to like uppercase, lowercase, things like that, because you'll only be marked correct if you have the exact code entered in. Um, and like no spaces before and after and things like that. Enter that and as soon as you have a passing mark in there, then basically what will happen is this section down here that tells you how to get started in the course um, will become open to you. So you can see it's restricted unless you've completed and passed the Go Course Code assignment. Once this opens up for you, basically it'll give you a link to the main um, course site that I use. So basically the way things work with Math 20-1 is is all of your tests are found on this Moodle page um, just because we kind of have like a setup that works well with it in Moodle. So all of your tests will be here. Um, and so, yeah, you like you can see that they'll be going through in order here. So essentially you can just find whatever unit you're on and then open it up and write your test. Um, yeah. Then, so once you've finished the Go course, you've entered in your code and you've passed it, and this section opens up for you. In that section, you'll be taken to, um, there we go, uh, this link, which is my math website, so math20-1. Um, now, actually, I'm going to be posting this video right here, so you'll probably have already gotten to this point if you're looking at this video. Um, so here I'm going to have this welcome video posted and basically all I want to walk you through now is um, how to work through this course. So the first thing is to be aware of this general resources page. Lots of time if you ask me questions about things I'll refer you to this general resources page. So if you are familiar with it now that'll probably save you and me both a lot of time um, emailing back and forth about things. So some important things. I'm going to actually start at the bottom here. Here is a link to the um, schedule for final exams at Argyle. So it'll include all of the exams, not just for math. Um, you have exam bank here, which is um, something that our school pays for so that you have access to um, banks of tests that you can use as practice for each chapter that you work on. Um, you're given a login and a password because we do pay for that um, so that you guys have access to it. Blackboard is the online platform where we will be meeting if um, you make an appointment that's online or if you want to show up to the online uh, weekly sessions. I have my school schedule here. It basically just shows you like when I would have appointments available, when I'm teaching, when the school opens and closes so that you know um, those times. 
Um, up here I have an appointment booking link so you can click on the link if you want to book an appointment with me. So you can have um, up to one half hour session per day. I'm only available on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays for appointments, um, but you can have a half hour session on any one of those days. Um, so basically, if you want help with anything, if you want to go over a test, if anything like that, that can't just be addressed in a simple email, um, you can go ahead and book here with me. Um, and like I said, you can do either online or on site. Um, you also have your formula sheet here. So with the formula sheet, if you got a copy when you came to pick up your textbook, that's great. I'm not 100% sure if they're giving printouts of this though, because it's just the one sheet. If you don't have a printer and you need a printed copy, um, you can come and see me in room 14 at Argyle um, and I can print off a copy for you. Otherwise, it's very important that you have this printed because if you're going to be using our online testing system, um, you won't be able to access any information during that test because uh, everything like the proctoring system basically shuts you down from opening up downloads or anything like that. So if you start the test and you don't have this printed, you won't have access to it during the test and that's not a great thing. So make sure that you have a printed copy ready to go before you write your first test. And make sure that your printed copy doesn't have any additional writing on it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into how the testing works. Then, last but definitely not least, is your course outline. And this is where so many of the answers that I get asked are found. Um, so if you ask me something that's in the course outline in an email or whatever, I'm just going to tell you to go and read the course outline um, because it's expected that you have read that and you know the information in here. All right, so first we have a few links. Um, actually, this one needs to get deleted because we do not use my locker anymore. Um, there we go. You have Learn Alberta, which has a bunch of different resources that you can use for studying. Um, and so again, that'll have a username and password. Exam Bank, like I mentioned before, which is on the resources page. And then probably one of the most important things here is your schedule. So because, you know, Math 20-1 is a fairly intense course, it's very important that you are on top of scheduling your study times. So basically what I've done is I've broken down how many school days. So when I count these days, I'm only counting like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So no Saturdays or Sundays. And I'd also don't include any holidays, spring break, um, professional development days where students wouldn't be at a normal school. Um, Ooh, normal, I don't know if I should say that, <laughs> regular school. Um, so basically this is only counting like active school days because I, I kind of count it as if you were coming into like a regular school. So that does end up freeing up a little bit of time for you if you are working on Saturdays and Sundays and stuff like that. That means that technically you could spend a little bit more time on this. However, if you aren't meeting these deadlines, regardless of the extra time or whatever, um, because I schedule this so that you would literally write your very last chapter test on the last possible day to submit anything. So nothing will be accepted after this time. So if you aren't finished at this time, then you will be marked as incomplete in the course and you'll have to re-register for it either in summer school or the following um, semester. So um, because it goes right up until that last day, I recommend very strongly that you try to stay slightly ahead of these due dates because that way if you encounter a chapter that just, you know, isn't making sense and you're struggling with it or if, you know, you get sick or any number of things that could happen that would delay you um, from being able to complete something as fast as you thought you would be able to, the earlier on that you can start getting ahead of these due dates, the less likely it is that you're going to have to come to me and say like, I got really sick and now I have it, now I'm behind and I can't get caught up. So try to stay ahead while you can so that you have the advantage of time on your side. OK, 
Okay. Um, the other thing too is, actually we're pretty good here. So these in Math 20-1, we do go through all the chapters in order. So, um, you know, you can just kind of follow them through chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 will be done in order. So nothing too confusing there. There is a mandatory final exam. I'm not sure what the date is yet, but I will post it as soon as I know. And it is worth 20% of your grade. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, next thing is some of the most important things. So first of all, you have to check your school email daily. If you gave a personal email to registration or whatever, that's great. But I, when I try to send out like a mass email to the class, I can't go in and find everybody's personal email because that would take me forever. So the way our system works is it will automatically send an email to your school email. Um, so if I have big updates about what's going on in the course or what's going on with final exams or anything like that, it will be in your school email. And so it is your responsibility to check this email every day, um, like a, like during the week, obviously, because I'm not going to be emailing you guys on weekends, um, so that you know what's happening, right? So this is basically if you were going to a regular school and you were sitting in a desk, the teacher has you there to tell you what's going on, right? And to, to let you know if there's any big changes happening. And because we don't have that, this is the only way I can communicate with you. So you need to make sure that you are checking that school email regularly. Um, let's see. Then I'll I'll, t I'll walk you through how to do all of this stuff when we get into the course, like how to work through it. Um, but if we go down to here, if you're making, like if you're working through assignments that I give you, assignments are not for marks, but they are for you to basically understand where you're at in the course. Um, because we do give you like, I do give you like the textbook solution key. So for every question that you work through, you should be checking the key to make sure that you got the answer right. If you can't get it right, um, and sometimes I also have like additional questions posted in the notes as well. If you can't get the right answer, then you need to first of all go back and try and figure it out because that's how people learn best is if you can figure out your own mistake, that will stick with you the best in terms of learning. However, if you're getting really frustrated and you're really stuck with a question that's just driving you crazy, there's a couple of options you have. So. You can send me an email which um, and tell me, like, be very specific, though. Where is the question? What, what page of the textbook? What's the question number? Um, or what section of the notes and, and where, like, or give me even just copy and paste the question. And basically what I'll do is I'll make you a little video of how to solve the problem. So then you can go back, watch this video. You can rewind it and rewatch it as much as you need to understand how to solve the problem. Or you can always email me back and say like that still doesn't make sense and then I'll see if I can explain it better. Um, so that's one way. The other way is just to come to our weekly online session. So um, our weekly online session for Math 20-1 is Wednesdays from 11 till 12. Because people are always enrolling at different times in these courses, I do not just run a class during that time. So I don't go over any specific topic because it's not really very helpful for most students because they don't know if they're going to be in the right area, like if of the of their studies in order for the session to make, you know, you know in order for the session to be worthwhile for them. So um, basically, these online sessions are just times where I'll be sitting in the online session and you can come in and ask for help. OK, and usually what happens is students just kind of drop in and drop out throughout the session, like they'll come in, ask a question um, and then and then leave once that's answered. The other thing is you can set up um, a meeting, so online or on site. And um, I showed you already where to book those. Then one of the last important things here is testing. So like I mentioned, testing is done by an online proctoring system. Um, tests are the only way that you get marks in this course. Okay, I don't mark any of your homework or your assignments. So with exams, um, you can 
write them using this online proctoring system. So that means you can write from home or, you know, if you're a concurrent student, you can write at the school you're at, whatever it might be. But essentially this will kind of watch you for me. And then, so it will record you. So you do need to have a webcam and and it will also record your screen. And then basically what can happen there is I can go back in and like it'll send me flags if there's any suspicious behavior. And then I can go back in and watch like the whole video and see what was going on. Um, so this system can be a little bit tricky though in the sense that, you know, we're obviously we need to keep, um, we need to, avoid any cheating, right? So, and it's our job as teachers to make sure that we know we're giving you a mark for something that you actually know, not something that, you know, you're able to pull off the internet or whatever while you're writing the test. Because of that, um, you know, because it's my professional obligation to know that you know that material, I have zero tolerance for failing to comply with the instructions on how to use Proctorio because it does lend itself to cheating, right? Like if you're not following the instructions, I can't say for sure that you know the material that you've um, presented to me. So basically what happens is there's no second chance for this. If on your first test you've written, I go in and find that you did not follow the instructions, you will not be able to write remotely anymore. You'll have to come on site for all of your exams. Um, and I will also have you write a replacement exam for the test that you did not do properly. Okay, so this is very serious um, and I take it very seriously. So make sure that you've read through everything. There's a um, Proctorio student guide that you can read here. It's linked in here. Um, as well as before each test that you write, you can um, so before each test that you write, you can go in and see the instructions. Um, I'll actually just show you guys really quickly. So for example, when you come into the test here in Moodle, here you can see that there's a written out all of the really important um, instructions that you need to remember. So you don't have to worry about always going back to the Proctorio student guide because I've highlighted the main points here, okay? Okay, so last of all is um, rewrites. So after you finish the entire course, then you can look back and do one test over again. Okay, so just pay attention to this fact is that I want you to have all the course material finished because lots of students are like, oh, I wrote my very first test and I'm not super happy with the grade, but you don't have unlimited rewrites in the course. Um, so what I want you to do is go through, make sure that you are confident before you write your test so that, you know, you're not just wasting an attempt because you just felt like pressure to get the test done on time or whatever it might be. So make sure that you're ready to write before you write because you are limited in how many rewrites you have. And um, the second thing is when you do the rewrite, you will have to come on site for it because I don't have multiple tests uploaded online. Um, the other way that you can improve your mark is, you know, your final exam mark can be used to improve your course grade. I actually have to change this. It shouldn't say replace, it should say improve. Um, because I don't have a final exam that covers every single concept in the course, so I can't use it to fully replace it. Um, but certainly it can improve your course grade. And part of the reason why I do things this way is because I want you guys to learn, like to improve your learning over the course of the semester and s striving towards like a good final exam mark will help you to learn better. Um, okay, so that's everything for that. Now the last thing I just wanted to show you guys is just working through the pages. So when you go to, when you want all of your um, course information, you're going to go to this chapters drop down menu, chapter one, and you can just work through them in order and it'll tell you like to do, you know, it'll kind of tell you, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So basically you're going to have, you'll always have one set of blank notes here. So these are notes that I haven't filled in. They're just blank. You may want to print them off so that you can go through and fill them in. And then I have filled in notes where you can see I've written in, you know, all the information, all the solutions and stuff like that. And basically what will happen is um, 
in, I don't have these class recordings posted for this chapter yet, but basically what will happen is I'll have, I think I had it for some, let's see if I can find a better chapter. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so here I have like my blank notes, my filled in notes, um, and then basically what I'll have is I'll have um, a video lesson of the notes. So essentially like with these notes, they'll be broken down into like section 3.1. Um, let's see. And then here you, so here you can see lesson 3.1. Sometimes I'll have in a, in brackets afterwards, day one or day two, because some of them, some of the lessons are pretty long and I don't want my videos to get like overly crazy long. So then you can actually notice that here I have 3.1 part one notes lesson and 3.1 part two notes lesson. Okay. So sometimes they'll be divided up and basically all I'm doing is going through the notes and filling them in, in these lessons. So you can kind of watch them and follow along in the notes. Um, and that should hopefully help you out. I also have lessons from the previous teacher, Dylan, who some of you guys might be familiar with. So he also has his videos still up here that you can watch. And then he also posted other videos that came from YouTube um, that apply to the same concept. So you can watch those. So there's lots of different video resources there for you to help you with the material. And yeah, that's basically it. So when you're finished with a section, then you're going to go to your Moodle and you're going to go to the test. Make sure you read those proctorio instructions one more time before you get started to make sure that you do everything right. And then you can just jump into um, the quiz when you're ready to go. Okay, so that's everything. And um, welcome to Math 20-1 and I look forward to working with you.